the silk report. As smooth as silk. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, or whatever time it is and wherever you are. Uh, welcome on board to day two's Silk Report from the French Open, a day in which we've seen former winners go out on both the men's and the women's side. Uh, former world number ones also go out, but two people once again endure and are safely through to the second round, and they are Rafa Nadal and Novak Djokovic. We'll begin with Novak Djokovic, as he was the person who pretty much closed out uh, the day's play and closed out being the words of the day because actually he was playing under the closed roof. Let me know in the live chat how much of an advantage or otherwise that may be, particularly with a potential quarterfinal clash with Rafa Nadal, who also safely came through today. Let me know how the power play may end up working out with, I'm sure, Nadal desperate to have that potential quarterfinal in the afternoon as opposed to the evening, if we remember some of his comments from after the match that they played last year. But let's focus on the present. Let's focus on the now. Plenty of tennis to come between now and the quarterfinal, so let's not get carried away. But let's talk about um, Novak Djokovic today. I have to say I was mightily, mightily impressed against Nishioka, the world number 99, I believe. Um, I thought Nishioka put up a really good fight, particularly in that first set that was nip and tuck. We saw how desperate... Um, Djokovic was getting with the yells of both relief and exultation with every point that he was winning just about. Um, I thought it was a very, very convincing uh, victory from Djokovic and one I'm not sure, sure he would have produced two or three months ago when he was somewhat rustier and even a little bit out of puff as it was in Monte Carlo, but he looked anything but out of breath today as he breezed through into the second round, winning the final set six love. But I thought Nishioka was excellent, which just goes to show how good Djokovic was. Six aces in that first set as well. I think the serve could be very crucial at this year's French Open. I think if his serve is on song and one or two of his opponents are slightly off song, especially when it comes to the latter stages, I think it could be crucial, as could the roof. We've seen how impressive he is on the hardcore indoors and compared to, say, his nemesis Rafa Nadal, he has a much better record. So let me know in the live chat how you see that progressing. I'm actually going to switch to the live chat right now to see some of your comments. Um, yes, uh, let's have a quick look. Won't do anything for 20 likes. John Silk is now in his last sip of a bottle of white wine. All a bottle of wine, yeah. Um, I'm here. No wine today, unfortunately. Gary's saying he only saw the third set by Nole. Looks to me like he will do his typical build-up at the tournament because I think the roof is an advantage. Yeah, I think the roof is an advantage, Gary. But I have to say, if he's got more gears to come, and I do believe he has, I think his opponents, all of his opponents, need to watch out. A quality shot there saying clinical Novak. I think that only tells part of the story. Um, I think you're absolutely right. He was clinical, but he was actually, <laughs> you know, if that's not his A game, I think his opponents need to be um, need to be concerned. Just because I think Nishioka played really well. I think Nishioka brought his A game, certainly for a set and a half, but maybe even longer. I think we need to take our hats off to uh, Djokovic and the Serbs' performance today. Um, and as he wowed uh, the uh, crowd with his French afterwards. Okay, let's move on to... The uh, world number five, of course, uh, Rafa Nadal bringing up a 6-2-6-2-6-2 win against Thompson today. Record breaker as his racket sponsor was pleased to announce 106 wins and three losses. And he also looked very good. The only difference I would say slightly is that I think that Thompson maybe didn't quite put up quite the same level of fight as Nishioka did. But that's nothing to take away from Nadal, who was very, very pleased to win in straight sets today. Some little notes I made on the match. I thought it was quite interesting to see how angry Thompson would get. And I thought it was kind of bizarre that, that what was Thompson expect? I remember one moment when Thompson was on the baseline. I do think, I don't know what kind of advice he was getting in, uh, in terms of standing so close to the baseline, given we all know what top's been Rafa can produce anywhere, but especially at the French Open. What's he doing standing so close there? And he got so angry. Like, what, what did he expect? Did he expect to, 
to sort of breeze through today against the uh, 13-time French Open winner. Um, I thought that was kind of bizarre uh, how stressed he got um, and also kind of stressed he got with with kind of Rafa's shots. I mean, it's hardly a shock to see him producing these. We've been seeing him produce these for the best part of a decade and a half. Um, uh, he also got uh, uh, an, an abuse. He got uh, a code violation uh, for ball abuse because I think it was the end of the first set, I'm not sure, when he just whacked the ball into the crowd, albeit uh, with an upward trajectory, whereas Rafa, of course, has been abusing balls at the French Open for the last 15 years. Um, we also saw a nice little moment of uh, Rafa sort of laughing and joking, uh, but anything but that from the other side of the net as he breathes through in straight sets where he will play Corentin Moutet, uh, who managed to overcome former French Open winner uh, Vavinka today in four sets. And Moutet, regarding his next opponent, said, he was my childhood idol. I was imitating his forehand, his serve, and even sleeping with his sleeveless shirts. <laughs> so there you go. Um, let me know in the live chat what you thought of Nadal today and also uh, Mutet's chances as well. Uh, 12 Travel 21, they're saying he thought Rafa faded slightly. Uh, his best tennis was in set one, whereas Joker got stronger. I certainly think Joker got stronger, um, but I thought Rafa looked pretty consistent throughout. Perhaps, yeah, he did fade a bit. I think he lost his serve at one point um, in the second or third set. Heartbreaking that Stan couldn't get the match versus Rafa. Yeah, and and Stan got a bit stressed, including using the F word with the umpire at one stage. But, yeah, it was always going to be difficult. Moutet, of course, uh, on home touch. I think Moutet, Rafa will be at nighttime match. Be interesting to see how Rafa deals with the 9 p.m. match. Yeah, I think it will be. I'm also pretty sure we can pencil, at least pencil in, for our diaries that Rafa Djokovic will be nighttime as well next Tuesday, I believe. Um, not certain. Lots of tennis to be played before, but I think ultimately when when Djokovic is asking for nighttime and Rafa's asking for daytime, that'll ultimately put viewers and bums on seats ahead of all things. And therefore, I think that'll be also in the evening, which I do believe will be a tiny advantage for Djokovic. But anyway, that's uh, to come later on in the tournament. Um... So yes, get let's get on with it anyway. So let's move on to some of the things. Oh, I almost forgot during my Rafa talk. Should have really had the uh, little hat on there. But let's move on anyway to the women's side of the draw. Nice to see an impartial observer here giving you the silk report today. Let's have the hat off there for and uh, back with the sunglasses to push the hair back. Um, okay, let's move on to the women's side because actually I think there was probably a little bit more excitement on that side of the draw today. With uh, First of all, let's talk about Emma Raducanu. Uh, I don't know how you thought about her performance. I thought it was gutsy uh, and brilliant in equal measure today against her opponent, um, Noskova, Noskova, the Noz, as JG was pleased to call her. Noskova obviously being his uh, qualified to watch. And to be fair, she was a qualified to watch for two sets, pushing Raducanu all the way. In fact, of course, winning that first set 7-6 before eventually going down in three sets, 6-7, uh, 7-5, six, 6-1. Seven, seven, but um, I thought she showed immense bottle today, particularly as things got tighter towards the end of the second set. Um, I think uh, her opponent, Noskova, was only a couple of points away from victory at one point. Um, but she did great, and I thought Noskova was great as well, aggressive and has lots and lots of potential and showing she's only 17, Raducanu obviously 19, so both at the very tender ages, and I'm sure they will be crossing paths a lot as the future goes on. Raducanu, I believe, is on course to play Halep, should they meet, which brings me to an interesting section right now. The Moratoglu section, um, which is going to be a brief moment where I predict that Halep will not be going far in this tournament because I do think that the Moratoglu effect is nowhere near as big as uh, we all make out or many people make out. Some people have her going far in this tournament, but I have her falling much earlier. Move on. Next stop. Time for Jose Morgado tweet alert to talk about Krajcikova losing today to the young 19-year-old Diane Parry from Paris. 
Um, we'll come to Krajikova in a second, but let's just dwell on Bahari and the victory that she had. I watched this game because it was on about 1 p.m. Where I, uh, where I am local time. Perfect for me. And yeah, I thought Parry in the, f I think Parry lost the first five games and actually got broken three times because she managed to break Krejcikova as well. But actually, I was really worried for Parry during that first set, thinking we might see a double bagel. Krejcikova, obviously, he's missed a lot of tennis this year for one reason or another, was on fire for those first five games. Parry looked like she needed a bit of time to get used to things, get used to that one-handed backhand that she has to get firing. Um, but Krajikova, who spoke in her press conference afterwards, said about how her she kind of ran out of steam. But I'm not sure if that's entirely the case. I think Parry got better and better. Um, I think Krajikova's lack of match practice on one way or another certainly did play its part. Makes you wonder why she didn't at least have one tournament of some description, even a 250, um, perhaps before this French Open to go in completely raw. And the reigning champion is out. But to, to uh, Diane Parry, hats off. If hats are falling for Moa Toglu, hats are certainly fir firmly on for Nadal. Hats off for Diane Parry. Because... She was excellent today. And that that one-handed backhand, that's so beautiful and actually kind of rare, I think, in the women's game. Excellent to see. Um, and she even talked about the fact that Liv, she lives, I think, six or seven minutes away by car from Roland Garros. So she's staying at home and even walking her dog in the mornings as a way to relax. And she certainly looked relaxed as she saw it out, 6-2, 6-3. Uh, Krejcikova kind of got nervous, I felt, as well, understandably so, during moments. And I think as she certainly began to lose confidence as well as things kind of began to slip away from her. And in fact, talking of things slipping away, she will now slip outside the top 10. Final port of call today, Naomi Osaka, who dropped out as well and will continue to drop down. Uh, and if we look at her record on clay compared to the hard courts, we can quite easily see that clay and grass, and she did intimate that she might not be playing Wimbledon uh, this year, which will be a real shame uh, in her press conference afterwards. I guess she wants a break, perhaps, and she wants to get back to the hard courts where she feels comfortably more comfortable, as we can see from her record here of 133 to 56, compared to a much more even record compared to clay and glass. Yeah, so she went out in straight sets to Anif Simova. Perhaps that wasn't really a shock. I think many of us, including me, had uh, Osaka going out. But it is kind of sad to see her toil on the clay. Okay, let's come to uh, let's uh, let's dwell on the picture of Djokovic there in the uh, Paris night with the roof on. While we come to some of your questions, uh, let's have a quick look. Um, Edimator, yeah, quite rightly says she's nothing to defend at Wimbledon. Well, she certainly doesn't have any points to defend there because nobody will be defending points at Wimbledon this year, as we all know. Um, cross court tennis there was always suspicious of Barbara coming into this tournament, but she exceeded how I early thought. I still thought she would go through today, um, uh, and especially the way she breezed through those first five games. I'm telling you now, watching that, I just thought, um, uh, make, make a look, looking at my notes here, um, uh, yeah, walks dog, tick, uh, lives six minutes away from the arena, tick, single-handed backhand, tick there, my notes on parry. But yeah, she was breezing. I thought it was going to be six love in that first set, and I was really worried for parry. I mean, she was... I think there was a point where she was barely getting a point on the board and the crowd even cheered at one point that she got a point. Uh, thanks, Dawson, there for correcting me on uh, Raducanu and Halep being on opposite side of the draw. Um, but anyway, it doesn't uh, change my opinion on uh, Halep. I don't see anything uh, particular from her in this tournament and I certainly have her going out fairly early. Um, do you think players should be punished for grunting loud? I think loud grunting is okay, especially since it has been... Yeah, I, I don't think there should be any uh, um, uh, points or anything deducted. No punishment for that. I mean, of course, if you do it as opponents are about to take a shot, that's very different. Um, but no, that's fine. Uh, Krejcikova, by the way, very emotional in her press conference afterwards. Um, and uh, she has skipped some of the tour today uh, so far this year, I think, to kind of, kind of take a breather from the game. A little bit like... Um, the Canadian um, Andreescu, who won today, by the way. Uh, so nice to see her in uh, the second round, including winning the third set with a bagel. Um, so, yeah, 
that's kind of where we're at. Let's have a quick look at the live chat before we finish. WTA gonna uh, gonna WTA definitely Jack loses first round like Ostapenko in 2018. Yes, thanks for that, Fanch. Um, lower rank French players did great today. Almost all of them went through. Yeah, amazing. Uh, JG57 there mentioning the outfit change. Yes, yeah, she finally did get the outfit change, Kajakova, but um, it ended up being a very different Kajakova in 2022, not just the outfit, but compared to that 2021 success, of course, that she had against Pavlyuchenko for last year. Hi, John. What do you th- who do you think is going to win the French Open men's and women's this year? Stop sitting on the fence. I'm not sitting on the fence. I've got, um, I've got Djokovic beating Rafa in the quarters. I've got, um, and I'll quite happily explain why, but probably a bit closer to the match. Of course, this is all at the beginning of the tournament, may well end up not happening. I've got Djokovic beating Alcaraz also in the quarter, uh, in the semi side. I see Alcaraz going far, and I see no reason for changing that. I see Sitsipas meeting Sinner in the other semi final just because their draws are so kind. Just goes to show that uh, if Sinner had lost, he was match point down against Chilich um, in uh, Rome. And if that match had been, you know, if Chilich had won that match, then Rafa would have been number four seed and would have had an amazing draw and we'd all be looking at this tournament very differently. But due to their draws, City Pass and Sinner. City Pass, of course, who'll be playing um, tomorrow uh, against uh, Musetti. I think that's a really interesting match. Might drop even a set there, but I do see City Pass going through. Hopefully you'll be able to catch that on the channel. And I have City Pass beating Sinner. And I see Djokovic beating um, Alcaraz. Uh, they had a really tight match in Madrid recently that could have gone either way, went the way of Alcaraz. But Grand Slam, five sets, semi final, French Open, tilts the balance in Djokovic's way. So I have a repeat of last year's final, and I see a repeat outcome as well with Djokovic winning. So that's the men's side. Swanchek, I've got her going all the way to the final. No shock there. I've already made my call on one or two other players, including Halep. And I've got um, her meeting uh, Sakura in the final. But I don't see that changing in terms of the trend of how they play, especially on clay. And I see Hala, uh, sorry, I see um, uh, Swanchek winning the title quite comfortably. Could be wrong, but it's all about predictions. And you asked me for mine. So that is it. So make sure you tune in tomorrow uh, where you'll be getting plenty more action as well. And as the tournament goes on, I will be giving a bit deep diving on, on certain matches, especially as they get tighter and more interesting. But as the matches come thick and fast, I will be getting uh, a bit more thoughts on the weather and playing two matches in one day. Yeah, of course, there have been a lot of rain today. So um, I don't see any mat- two, you know players playing two matches in one day tomorrow uh, as they have done in previous. I mean, you can't. Five sets is a bit different to three sets, which we've seen at other clay tournaments such as Barcelona earlier uh, in the season where I think um, uh, Alcaraz had to play twice in one day. But of course, yeah, the rain delays today meant that certain players will have to continue tomorrow. But as it's early stages of the tournament, they'll be fine and will keep fresh. And I don't see that being an issue. But yes, yeah, some of the players that weren't fortunate enough to play on Philippe Chatre will have to reconvene tomorrow because we had quite a few rain delays today, which is why Djokovic was afforded the roof this evening. Thank you very much for tuning in to today's uh, Silk Report. Here's my latest prediction. We'll see each other tomorrow. Goodbye. The Silk Report.